My aunt recently got a hold of me and told me that she just had a new black walnut staircase railing installed in her house. And she was wondering if I could turn her some 8 inch diameter black walnut spheres to put on top of the pedestal to sort of cap off the whole project. What I had to tell her was, I don't honestly know if I can or not. Um, the truth is, my lathe is kind of on the cheapy side. It's not one of the big, heavy, cast iron ones. Um, it's, it's more a piece of sheet metal housing with a motor stuffed inside it. So, the truth is, the, the swing is big enough. It's, by the numbers, it's capable of handling an 8-inch sphere. What I don't know is if it can handle the weight of it. The last time I tried to do anything of any size, it shook so bad that I thought the whole thing was going to fly apart. Now, that's where this video comes in. Um, when I tried that one, it was a fairly unbalanced piece of wood that I was trying to turn. Smaller than this 8 inches, but more unbalanced. Um, that's where this piece of firewood is going to come in. I just want to do a practice run and find out if my equipment can handle this or not. Um, this piece is 10 inches in diameter, and if I had a big heavy lathe, I would just throw it in there and turn it down and be done with it. But since I need it to be balanced, I'm going to give this thing the best chance of succeeding, and I'm going to cut this down on the bandsaw until it's square and almost to the right size to begin with and give it the best chance of succeeding. Uh, then I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe and just see if the lathe holds together. If, if it starts shaking really bad, then it's just not going to happen. Uh, and maybe it's time to go buy a new lathe. But, uh, so the first step is going to be to cut this thing down and get it as perfect and balanced as possible. And then we'll throw it in the lathe and see what happens. There it is, that, that big ugly chunk of firewood was actually a nice piece of blue stained pine, um, but it's been reduced from a honking piece of log to uh, this far more manageable sized piece of wood. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a lot more, it's a lot closer to being symmetrical. It's a lot, it's about as good as it's going to be for what I'm trying to do, so I gave it the best chance of succeeding. Uh, the next thing will be to just chuck it up in the lathe and hope that it works. Um, I do know from previous experience that I need to secure my lathe table a little bit better than I usually than I do when I'm just you know using it in a hurry on smaller pieces. So for this I'm gonna have to bolt it down a little bit better. Uh, so I'll do that next then I'll get it chucked up there and then it'll be the moment of truth. We'll turn it on and see if it's if it's gonna be stable enough to work with. Well, it went ahead and got cold on me outside before I could get this project tested out, and considering this was my last piece of firewood, uh, I guess I'm just going to have to rough it for the rest of the year and have a cold shot for a while. But uh, anyway, I, I've got this thing chucked up in the lathe. I've got it all set and ready to go. 
So maybe you've seen before that my lathe bench is collapsible and I fold it up into the wall when I'm not using it. And it's fairly rickety on the one leg that holds it up, but all of the small projects that I've turned haven't been a big deal. Um, so for this one, just knowing ahead of time that it might be a problem, I went ahead and braced the leg, I put a huge foot on the leg, I put about 100 pounds of lead on top of that foot to hold the whole bench down to keep it from hopping around. I screwed some blocks to the hinge part of the bench to lock that down and make sure that there was no pivot left in the hinge joint. And then I went so far as to take a 2x4 and bolt it directly to the wall behind the lathe. So at this point, if there's any shake or vibration left in the bench, I'm putting it into the walls and to the floor of the shop. Um, if there's any vibration at this point, it's got to be coming from the machine because even though it's sort of a hokey operation uh, combined with overkill, I have eliminated every variable that I possibly can and now it's just a matter of can the lathe stand up to turning this block. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, I've got a four pulley system inside this thing, no, no dial for the speed control, so I've got it set to the slowest it'll possibly turn, which it's saying is 980 RPMs, so once again, best case scenario that I could provide for this. Um, anyway, I've got my face shield on just in case things decide to get a little western around here, and I'm not going to just shove the on button, I'm going to sit here and sort of nurse it and see what it happens. So. Here we go. Well, that's not a good sign. Well, I don't like that at all. Um, that's pretty disappointing. I figured going through all this extra precautions I was going to be able to make it work, but what that tells me is that the cheapy construction of this lathe is just not up to the challenge of that heavy of a workload. So, um, I guess the conclusion here is that I'm going to have to tell my aunt I can't make uh, her pedestals for her until I buy myself a new lathe. So, anyway, um, I realize how hokey my setup looks right now, but I can assure you that it is as sturdy as it was possibly going to be. So, short of building a new 400 pound bench and hoping for the best, I think I gotta call this one a loss. Um, if you have better ideas for me, if any of you have experienced a vibrating lathe and have some good idea other than, hey dummy, you did it wrong. Um, I would be all ears. I'd be very curious if I can find a solution for this without spending a bunch of money. So anyway, hit me up with the comments on that and I guess we'll just see you in the next project.